When should you start thinking about and planning for your college applications? I'm Andy Lockwood from Lockwood College Prep. This is another video in our Fact Us Friday series where we talk about questions that we get all the time about the college admissions process so that you can give your kid the competitive edge over his or her competitors when they apply for college. Okay, so when's the best time to start getting ready or start preparing for the college applications? In order to answer this, I need to give you a little bit of background on exactly what goes into the college applications, meaning what makes a great candidate in the eyes of admissions officers. So basically there's, there's two categories of components of the college application. There's about 60% is academic, 40% is non-academic. So what goes into each of these categories, if you understand this, then you can put together a great college application. The earlier you start thinking about this stuff, the better, because most kids don't meet with their guidance counselors until somewhere around 11th grade, but what you're doing when you apply to college is you're summarizing your entire body of work from ninth grade forward. So if you have that initial meeting, your big college meeting, with your guidance counselor at your high school, whether it's a private high school or a public high school, that may be too late to do anything about it. So this message is geared toward people who are being a little proactive, those with ninth graders and 10th graders. If you have an 11th grader, there still are tweaks that you can do, but understand what goes into the college application. So the academic components are your GPA, your rigor, and your SAT or ACT scores. GPA is pretty self-explanatory, but rigor is pretty important because a lot of kids don't max out on the amount of AP classes or IB classes that are available to them uh, as high school students. And that's not a big deal unless your child has aspirations of going to an Ivy League or a similar competitive college, because if you don't max out your AP or IB classes, then you're in effect almost fighting with one hand tied behind your back when you face that competition for the same schools who has taken a ton of, of rigorous classes, right? So uh, GPA is important, but let's face it, with all the grade inflation, it's not the same thing that it used to be. And your, your SAT or ACT scores, you know, there, there's been a, a little bit of pushback on all the test optional policies. So most of the IVs are no longer test optional and most competitive schools have followed suit. So the SAT and the ACT are super important, a little nuanced, but they're still very important. Okay, what about the 40? Well, you've got, um, you've got your extracurricular activities, which I divide into atypical extracurricular activities or non-atypical, or maybe in English, typical extracurricular activities. So what's the difference? Well. If you're, in a, if you're in a club, that's great, but if you're a president or a leader in some other capacity, that's atypical. If you like to read and write, that's, that's cool, pretty typical. If you self-published a book, that's atypical. So these are things that are in your control. And then there's a whole bunch of stuff that's not in your control, like race, still, ethnicity, uh, what high school you attend, because some schools are feeder high schools into certain colleges. And then there's, a, there's really a whole bunch of other stuff. There's about 20 or 25 factors that go into the admissions decision, but they're broadly based in these two categories. And, and I think what happens with, with a lot of students is when they don't get in to the top schools that they really hope to get into, maybe then they find out that they were lacking in one of these categories. They didn't have enough interesting atypical extracurricular activities, or they didn't apply to the right schools that would value them as college applicants. So really the best time to start prepping for college admissions and the application is way before you're actually filling out that college application. Most kids are not necessarily ready to work with a private college advisor like us, but if you are, you can certainly reach out to us. You can check out our website and our phone number and email address, which, which I'll post here. But that doesn't mean that even if you're not working with us or someone like us, that doesn't mean that you uh, shouldn't start thinking about these things and thinking strategically. 
not just with the academic components, but also the extracurricular components. And then as you progress throughout your high school career, you wanna make some tweaks and go deeper in some extracurricular activities and others, preferably those that have to do with uh, your career aspirations, if, if you have such a thing, or things that are other, otherwise valuable to you, but also uh, atypical, not typical or non-atypical. Uh, if, you, if you like this video, please subscribe so you don't miss out on any of these other tips. You can't get this stuff, as far as I know, from your high school guidance counselor. So if you subscribe you know, on whatever platform you're watching this on or listening to this on, then you won't ever be in the dark about how college admissions really works. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll talk to you soon.